Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Efforts are intensifying across Africa to secure an extension of the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act. Terence Screamer has been monitoring developments and joins me to talk about some of the strategies being employed. Hi Terence. South Africa, along with the rest of the continent, has been benefiting from AGOA since 2000. What is AGOA and why is it receiving so much attention again now? Well, it goes a piece of legislation that went through the U.S. Congress and Senate in 2000. And it basically gives preferential market access to African uh, goods into the world's largest economy. And it covers a wide range of goods. Um, and uh, most African economies can't take advantage of the full array uh, of duty-free and quota-free access. Um, but it still does offer that access and it's, it's fairly beneficial um, for Africa and uh, it has helped uh, stimulate a lot more trade between African economies and that was its objective and the US economy and it is unilateral in the sense that uh, Africa didn't have to offer any reciprocity in return for receiving these benefits which were first uh, you know uh, introduced when President Bill Clinton was still in office it was renewed in 2008 when President George uh, Bush was in office and now it's, uh, it's become a topic of discussion again because uh, in the next couple of years uh, the Congress and the Senate have to decide whether they're going to renew it again beyond the September 2015 expiry date. What are some of the concerns being raised in the US about the future of AGOA and South Africa's participation in particular? Well, there's a review underway. You know, um, the US has got many issues at the moment economically and I think they're wanting to make sure that this legislation is achieving its objectives. It was really about uh, helping Africa improve its trading position. So it was a trade rather than aid type remedy. And it seems to have uh, supported uh, Africa's uh, uh, expanded trade with the US. But uh, whether it's achieved what the US lawmakers that, uh, that uh, you know, drafted the legislation uh, wanted is, is something that's being reviewed now. Uh, they wanted a diversity, diversification of trade. It's been fairly narrowly based to mineral products and uh, energy related products, except for South Africa, which does quite a bit of automotive uh, export into the US as a result of a go. And it's also got some clothing and textile uh, the benefits, but it's still fairly nar narrowly based across a few product ranges, even though it offers for South Africa about 98% of our products that leave the shore for the US are able to enter that market duty and quota free, not only because of AGOA, but because of the GSP status that we have and most favored nation status. So a good 27% of that uh, is attributed to AGOA, but the, uh, these other schemes allow really good access to South Africa. So I think uh, the, with the expiry coming up and with discussions around renew renewal, um, there's really a, uh, some introspection and some thought going into this scheme as to whether it was properly designed, whether it's achieving its objectives. And then there's the issue of South Africa, which is relatively developed, and it was really not targeted for an economy of this size, but we are a big beneficiary. So there are concerns that maybe uh, some lawmakers might feel that uh, South Africa should be graduated out, as they say, from the scheme because it's because uh, of its relative development and uh, that you know also with South Africa joining the the BRICS countries and having other trading relationships and preferential relationships else elsewhere there are concerns that maybe the playing field for US companies and US imports into South Africa are not as even or as level as they should be this particular concern that South Africa has a reciprocal trade arrangement with the European Union um, so the goods from European Union enter South Africa uh, in, you know, in, a, in a better way, in an easier way than that from the US. So a number of things are being flagged around both the design generally of a guy and whether it's achieving its objectives and that would be an African issue and then specifically around South Africa and whether it is really uh, you know, uh, in need of a go still and whether it should continue being a beneficiary. How is the response from government, business and civil society shaping up? Well, all of, all of uh, governments across Africa, civil society generally and business 
are quite supportive of a continuation of a go, rolling it over for quite an a, a extended period. There's optimism, uh, well, there's talk about, um, and maybe overly optimistic, of a 15-year renewal um, from 2015 onwards, which uh, those different stakeholders believe will give a lot of certainty to American investors, to, to those that want to tap into that market access, into that the world's biggest economy. And they feel that it's, it's you know, it really is playing a good role in, in stimulating trade for South Africa. Our trade has recovered with the U.S. post the recession to around $15 uh, billion in 2012. And it's a fairly balanced relationship. And that's one of the big arguments um, that the, the, our government is making, that it's not just a, a one-way ticket. Yes, um, there are, for instance, car makers, European car makers that are big beneficiaries going through AGOA and less so, uh, ironically, the U.S. car makers. But on the whole, it's, it's created a lot of goodwill. On the whole, it's helped improve trade relations. And, it's, and the balance is not all one way. So you have sort of 7.5 uh, billion imports into South Africa from the U.S. and 7.6 billion exports from South Africa to the U.S. So as you can see, not a, a very big margin between those. So th the feeling is that this this could be this is an important thing. It's it's helped stimulate trade. It's a fairly South Africa is be benefiting more than others from the, the diverse array of products that are open to, to uh, Africa and very few other countries can actually take advantage of. And then there's the whole issue about um, our desire for greater regional integration and having a separate. Um, and distinct uh, trading relationship or trading arrangement into the U.S. Uh, for South Africa when it is really part of one SACU and the immediate countries, then there's the SADC uh, block, and then there's going to be this bigger uh, free trade agreement from Cape to Cairo. And having a, a distinct trading framework for South Africa could you know, place a few constraints in, in the way of building up regional uh, supply chains and value chains, which is the objective of regional integration and an objective very much supported by the U.S. administration and by the lawmakers. So I think what we, the phase we're in now is really a, there's, there's a sort of a communications that are going on, uh, that are underway. We've got government to government communication in the form of our trade and industry minister, Rob Davies, was in the U.S. recently. And uh, he not only spoke to his counterparts uh, in the administration who really don't have the final say, but whose support is important, but he also spoke with uh, congressmen and senators as well as uh, think tanks and lobby groups. And similarly, and I think quite importantly, the American Chamber of Commerce uh, in South Africa went across in September and uh, they represent uh, 250 US companies that are in South Africa. And some of these, you know, are large companies such as Ford and General Electric and General Motors and IBM and Microsoft. And they are saying, you know, we think this is good for Africa to continue. And given that we are uh, American companies that are in this jurisdiction, whatever is good for Africa is also good for us ultimately in the sense that it helps growth and development, it helps expand the middle class. Uh, in Africa, and it's that middle class that is going to be buying products from the likes of um, uh, the car makers, the software companies, the computer firms, and all the others that we know about the Coca-Cola. So I think that that was a, that's an important message, even though they have some issues themselves with the Goa, and they also have some issues with the what they see as the uneven playing fields between themselves and say European companies and they're using this time as a bit of a leverage, using that as a bit of leverage to try and get a better deal out of the South African government. I think there's, it, it looks good that both business uh, from South Africa, but especially business, uh, businesses that are investors from uh, the US together with government are all singing from the ha same hymn sheet and that is that a go is good for Africa and what's good for Africa is ultimately good for uh, growing uh, and developing this e economy and this market for not just U.S. products, but for products that are made here and products that come in from elsewhere. But in this case, I think they have to sell the fact that it's good for American business too. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.